Good morning, everybody. Um, this article is uh, Four Shocks of Revelation. One day, everything will be shaken. Everybody knows there's something in the air. I don't care if you're a, a God follower or you're not. We all feel it. We all know something is different. Something's happening. Since 2020, everything is falling apart. This is going to explain it, but there's hope at the end. So stay with me to the end, please. It's true that the virus is causing upheaval around the world. Our countries, whole countries are being quarantined. Massive sports events are being canceled. Schools are being closed. The stock markets are collapsing, but this is just a mere tremor compared to what is coming. One day the whole earth will be shaken. The author of Hebrews tells us the Lord has promised once more, I will, not, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is, created things, so that we cannot be shaken may remain. Everything will be shaken on that day. This is how Jesus described it. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror. Sorry, I didn't turn off my notifications. Apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Or, in the vivid language in Revelation, the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and everyone else, both slave and free, hid in caves and among the rocks of the mountains. They called to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come and who can withstand it? Can you imagine a scene like this? Very few want to talk about God's judgment today, even within our church. Preachers are avoiding it. They, the congregations, they want sweet stuff, happy stuff, nice stories, make us smile. This makes God sound mean, but to the contrary, what God, what it makes God sound just. He's a just God, you guys. He will judge in righteousness. He will punish the wicked. He will bring retribution. It's good news for the righteous and the godly. As the psalmist said, let all creation rejoice before the Lord. For he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples of his faithfulness. Judgment on the wicked also means salvation for the righteous. The book of Revelation also speaks of the pouring out of seven bowls of divine wrath on the earth, resulting in horrific judgments on those who refuse to repent. There will be no vaccines or cures on that day. There will be no intervention by the government. There will be no way of escape other than running to the Lord for mercy and taking refuge under his wings. Judgment is certainly coming. Isaiah put it like this, and the, the author of this says, please read this slowly and prayerfully. So please listen. See, the Lord is going to lay waste the earth and devastate it, and he will ruin its face and scatter its inhabitants. It will be the same for priests as for people, for the master as for his servant, for the mistress as for her servant, for seller as for buyer, for borrower as for lender, for debtor as for creditor. The earth will be completely laid waste and totally plundered. The Lord has spoken this word. The earth dries up and withers. The world languishes and withers. The heavens languish with the earth. The earth is defiled by its people. They have disobeyed the laws, violated the statutes, and broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse consumes the earth. Its people must bear their guilt. Therefore, earth's inhabitants are burned up and very few are left. Even if we understand that the prophets sometimes spoke in high hyperbolic language the overall meaning of this of these words are undeniable one day severe judgment will fall on a guilty planet and if you ask me it's starting now yet even in the midst of this terrifying description there are words of hope for God's people in fact there is a divine inv invitation to take refuge in him that's for you every one of you for me for all of you Go, my people, enter your rooms and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until his wrath has passed by. See, the Lord's coming out of his dwelling to punish the people of the earth for their sins. The earth will disclose the bloodshed on it. The earth will conceal its slain no longer. As Proverbs states, the name of the Lord is a fortified tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. And as Psalms 91 declares, there's a place of protection, a hiding place in God Most High. Don't you want to have a hiding place in these times? I do. 
That's why Jesus said to his followers, immediately after warning of the judgment that would be coming to the earth, when these things began to take place, stand up, lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. The coming of the Lord is at hand. And that's why the very passage from Hebrews that we quoted at the beginning of this article ends with this. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for God is a consuming fire. Do y'all have respect for God and awe of Him? He's God. The whole world will be shaken, but God's kingdom, God's people will not be shaken. As the psalmist declared, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give away and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. And this surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Saints, don't fear the bad news. Don't look around at everything falling. Look toward the maker that made the heaven and the earth. Their hearts are secure. They will have no fear. In the end, they will look in triumph on their foes. It is true that the virus has taken many lives so far, and every life is precious. And it is true that many more lives could be lost, along with real suffering for hundreds of millions due to the economic crisis that's coming. But this is only a small blip on the radar compared to what is coming. Now would be a good time for us as God's holy people, to learn to trust him in the midst of crisis, putting our spiritual roots deep down. And I would add to that, spreading the word and helping our brothers and sisters to understand, and people who aren't our brothers and sisters to understand there is a way of refuge, there is a safe place. Realize that all life is transitory and that at best we are only passing through this world. Now would be a good time to take a hold of Take hold afresh of the beauty of the cross and the gift of eternal life. It's a gift. Will you guys accept this gift? Now would be a good time to be used as agents of mercy and hope to a hurting world. In Jesus, we have all that we will ever need, and in him, we will never be shaken. And I pray for everyone who's hearing this that you please think about this, ponder this, consider this, but hurry. Because it, it looks like time is running out. God bless you. There is a safe place. It's going to be okay.